I'm so excited for today's video. It's gonna feel like the good old days. Hi everyone. Today is very exciting because I'm going back to my roots, going back to the beginning of the Steph Bora YouTube channel, and doing a book recommendation based on a very specific trope, which used to be like all I did on my channel. But I've talked about this before. It became a little bit hard to keep up with because I was forcing myself to read books specifically to film those videos. So I'd read like 10 fake dating books in a row and then do a video recommending the ones I liked. And it started to make me like not love reading as much anymore because it felt like I was forcing myself to read the same books about the same things right in a row but over the past like few months I haven't really done a specific trope recommendation video because I've been allowing myself to read whatever I want I'm kind of just recommending everything that I've read in my monthly reading wrap-ups but I have a specific trope recommendation today because over the past few months I've stumbled across a lot of books with this trope something I really enjoy and I actually like look four books like this, Beach House Summer Romances. So every book I'm talking about in today's video are romances that are set at a beach house specifically. And I'm so excited to talk about the books that I have planned for this video because they're such good ones. And this is such a good trope, especially because we're nearing the end of May. It's about to be peak summer, beach vibes, and of course you want to read some good summer books. Starting with the book that really inspired me to film this video because I was like, I need to talk about this. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book just came out, I'm pretty sure. It was literally phenomenal. This book reminded me so much of Love in Other Words, which is one of my favorite books that I'm going to also be talking about later in this video. It's told in past and present perspective, which a lot of these books actually are. Something I really enjoy because you get two stories. So you're watching them when they were kids. They used to go to this beach house all the time. And I loved watching like their cute little like friendship grow over the years. I think it starts like 15 summers ago and then you work back to like the present and you know something happened between them because they're not in contact anymore so you're like okay what possibly happened between them in the present perspective the main girl does not go back to the beach town anymore she has like bad memories associated with it and then she gets a phone call it's like her childhood lover's brother saying i thought i should tell you i know we haven't talked in years but our mom just passed away and i know she's really important to you and i think sam would want you here so she's like oh my god i haven't seen sam and i haven't seen any of that family in so long she's so upset about their mom's death so she goes back to the beach town that she like, grew up going to every summer and she starts reuniting with all the people that she used to be friends with and used to know and specifically sam who's like her childhood best friend so many years have passed since they've last seen each other they had an obvious falling out and you eventually find out why i thought sam was so sweet i really liked the boy character in this book finding out what did happen to them i was like i did not expect it at all so yeah i really really recommend this book i actually read it in one day because i just couldn't put it down like the way it was written i just was like oh i want to read a present chapter where they were getting like their second chance romance and like finding out what happened between them all those years ago and then i'd get to the past chapter where they were like kids and falling in love for the first time i'm like oh my god i want to read another past chapter so i have to keep reading it was addicting <laughs> the next book i have to recommend for this trope is alex approximately by jen bennett it is the trope where they talk online and they know each other online anonymously and they like are best friends friends online and then they know each other in person but they don't know it's each other that have been like low-key falling in love online right but then it's also sad a beach house the girl moves to live with her dad who lives in a beach town in california she goes to live with him for the summer it's like her mission to find this boy because they know they live in the same town now but they like aren't gonna meet up until like the end of summer a specific date that they set so she's kind of like looking for him and like every time she meets someone she's like asks them questions to try to like see if they could be this guy she's falling in love with she like gets a summer job and she meets this boy and immediately they like don't like each other you watch them fall in love as each other not realizing that they already are like in love online obviously it gets revealed eventually but i thought it was super cute i definitely recommend it if you're like younger especially because it is young adult but i really liked it the next book is second chance summer by morgan Matson. the romance was kind of like a subplot and i feel like the main plot was like the family relationships and like the friendships that the main character spent like restoring throughout this book the main girl's family is like not very close her and her siblings don't really get along her parents no no one is like really close in their family but they find out some news that's not that good and they decide they're gonna have like this really fun one last hurrah summer and they go back to the beach house they haven't been back in years but they're like we're just gonna do it and have a good summer as a family and you're told that the main character had a falling out with her friend group and her childhood crush or like her best friend you know something went down with all her friends but you don't know what uh, she comes back to this town she gets a job she starts seeing these friends again and like kind of trying to restore her friendships with them and she runs into like her childhood kind of boyfriend crush childhood best friend he like is nice to her but has his guard up and he just doesn't trust her 
her and you're like what happened between them like something must have happened throughout the book she restores all her friendships her family gets way closer than they've ever been and she ends up making up with this boy and there's a romance there this wasn't my favorite just because i had different expectations going in i didn't know it was going to be about like family relationships but i enjoyed it nonetheless the next book is the infinity between us by ns perkins the two main characters were best friends growing up their families were like so tight-knit like best friends they grew up together their parents are all best friends they owned a beach house all together so her entire family and his entire family lived together every summer in this house and they were all just like the best friends and they do most fun things all together all the kids grew up together eventually as they get older a romance starts up between the two main characters and i think when they're like 17 years old ish and then this one is also told in past and present and you know that they had a falling out this is a common theme where you find out that her mom actually passed away and it has something to do with that their families aren't friends anymore something bad went down but she comes back to this beach house all these years later because they're getting ready to sell the house and when she shows up the boy is there that she fell in love with when she was young and he really doesn't want to sell the house and they're kind of like arguing over it and she's just like not having it but he's like give me the summer to convince you that we shouldn't sell the house that we should keep it and she's like, fine, whatever. So she's gonna live there for like the next six to eight weeks, I think it is. And it's a second chance romance. Forced proximity, because they're living in the house together. And yeah, I think it was really cute. I really liked watching when they were young, falling in love. Like I liked that romance plot a lot. Next book I'm gonna talk about is an obvious one, is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. This is a trilogy, love triangle, young adult romance series. I've talked about this series a few times on my channel. The reason I'm bringing it up now again is because not only does it fit this trope perfectly, but it also is becoming a TV series that comes out like the beginning of June, which is so exciting. This series about a girl who also owns a beach house, obviously, with her family and then her family's really close friends that have two sons one of the sons has always been like her best friend and the other one she's always kind of had a crush on but he's older and they come back to this beach house one summer and suddenly they're like romantically interested in her and like her best friend is kind of feeling the vibes and then she's like maybe the older brother will like like me now whatever it is a love triangle between the brothers and her throughout this three book series which i know a lot of people don't love love triangles because it does get really frustrating it's very dramatic and entertaining and i'm very excited to watch it on the screen <laughs> okay the next book is the summer of broken rules i think this is the best feel good summer book I could think of. It's set on the Cape. So like Martha's Vineyard, which is already like beautiful. It's about this girl whose sister has just passed away. She's going through a rough time, her and her whole family. But one of her like aunts or something is getting married. So they're going to Martha's Vineyard, which is where they usually go every summer. But this is her first time going without her sister. So it's kind of like emotional for her and she's like not that excited and not very happy. But the whole family is trying to like make it this upbeat thing and make everyone feel comfortable and happy. And they start this game with the whole family where you basically just like get a target and you have to spray them with a water gun but it lasts like the whole summer and the last person standing who doesn't get sprayed like wins money or something and so everyone that was invited to this wedding is playing this game and they're all living at these different beach houses on the island like running around crazy and she ends up meeting this boy who's part of like the groom's side of the family and he's her age and they like spark up a little alliance within this game they start hanging out a lot they're kind of just like friends that form this alliance but then the girl's whole friend group and like her cousins and stuff are like what are you doing like why are you in alliance with that guy like you should be on our side and like all this drama and then there's romance between them and I think it was really cute and lighthearted and just like fun the vibe of playing the game there's so many Taylor Swift references in this book like the author knew what she was doing and it's like them riding their bikes and getting ice cream and going swimming in the ocean and just like the best vibe I really really recommend this book I loved reading it I couldn't put it down I feel like the way it's like described and written made me feel like I was there like I really got sucked into it and I loved it okay the next book I'm gonna talk about is Heartbones by Colleen Hoover I read this book last summer and it <laughs> so good this one's like a more deep not as like lighthearted out of all of these so basically in this book Bea lives with her mom and just not in a good situation Bea is kind of forced to like take care of herself and do everything alone and completely fend for herself her parents are divorced and she finds out her dad is actually like super rich and lives in a mansion with his new family she calls her dad and she's like I'm coming to live with you and he's like great like can't wait to see you whatever he has no idea how she's been living or like that the mom hasn't been taking great care of her she gets to this beach house she's so surprised with the way like her dad has been living and now she's gonna be living with him she's kind of just very closed off and reserved and not wanting to get close with anyone but the dad's new wife has kids so she's like step siblings that are around her age and they kind of like take her into their friend group they go to the beach and bonfires and like do all this fun stuff and she meets a boy her stepbrother's best friend and a romance starts sparking up between them they start hanging out a lot like one-on-one -on -one. their romance was very cute and definitely very summery obviously it's a Colleen Hoover book so you know there's gonna be a little bit of a plot twist and some drama so this one is like a deeper beach house romance 
um, if you like Colleen Hoover, you'll love this book. Next is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is one of my favorite books. I just think it was so good. And this one's actually set at a lake house, I think. Is that cheating? I don't know, but it feels like beach vibes. But basically, this book is told again in past and present perspective. So it's flashing back and forth. When Macy was young, her mom passed away and she left a note for her and her dad saying that they should buy this lake house so that they have a place to go, like escape from the world and the city and everything. And so they do. They get this lake house. They go there every weekend and every summer. And literally the first day that they move in, Macy meets the next door neighbor, Elliot, who's this little boy who loves reading and she loves reading. So they immediately become friends and they're like seven years old. Over time in the past perspective, you're watching them fall in love for the first time when they're young. And then you know that something bad happened. Again, this trope because they're no longer in communication in the present tense. I think for the past like 11 years or something, but then they run into each other as adults and they like start talking a little bit and he has a different girlfriend and she has a different boyfriend. Slowly a friendship builds between them again and you get some answers about what happened to them, which what happened to them? I don't know, was not what I expected either. But Elliot was so cute to her, like a majority of the book, like he was just so cute. <laughs> I remember there's like a specific quote where he's I actually can't say that that's a spoiler anyway I really love this book it's a five star for me it's just one of those books you can't put down because you like need to know what's gonna happen it's never boring like every chapter you're like okay now I need to get to the other one like I found both the past and the present perspectives very entertaining and very interesting and I was never bored while reading it like the entire time so yeah I cannot recommend love in other words enough okay similar to the lake house vibe is beach read which you're probably like that makes no sense why is it called beach read I don't know why it's called beach read but it is set at a lake house I love this this book so much I think I could reread Beach Read for like the rest of my life. So it's about January who's a writer and she's having like the worst writer's block and hasn't come up with any new stories or anything in a while and she also found out her dad passed away. So she decides she's gonna move into her dad's old house, go through all of his old stuff, kind of just go through the house, take a little break from the outside world. It will also give her like a space to go and write. So she moves there. She realizes that her next door neighbor, like the guy living in the lake house next door, is this guy she knew in college who she always like had like a rivalry with over who was a better writer and who got better grades and who did better on this and that they've always just had a really competitive relationship and they didn't really get along and she's like oh my god no way that he lives next door to me now when i'm in a writer's block whatever somehow like over time they talk whatever and he's also writing a book but the two of them decide that they're going to switch genres so he's gonna write a romance book and she's gonna write like a sci-fi book to help them get out of their writer's block to like show the other one that they could write the other person's genre you know like their rivalry <laughs> they task each other with like going on all like these little excursions and adventures to like research for their book so she takes him on all these like stereotypical romantic dates so he can like get a sense of romance so he can write about it and then he takes her to like all these creepy interviews like cults all this crazy stuff that he writes about so then they're forced to spend time together they like have a designated day every week that they like dedicate to this he is so serious but like the development development of their relationship is so cute like the little moments is what makes the whole thing um I love this book so much it's definitely very popular but like rightfully so now that I talk about it I want to reread this book I'm gonna reread it this summer so good okay and then this is not a romance but it is set at the beach and it's Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid I wanted to include it in this video even though this is supposed to be like beach romances and this isn't a romance but it is set at the beach I need to talk about it because it's that good basically the main character Nina lives in this giant man on the beach in Malibu and she's really close with her four siblings so it's like two girls and two boys and they're all super close but she lives in this mansion because she's become like a really successful model and her husband is a really successful tennis player but her husband has just left her so now she's alone in this giant house she never even really wanted to live in this house in the first place she just wanted to be with her husband and a big plot of this book is that the four siblings mom passed away and basically Nina raised these kids like she's done everything for them since she was super young and it's because their dad left their family. He went off to become like one of the most famous musicians in the world. You watch all the siblings have their different storyline in this book. I felt like I was part of their family. The way Taylor Jenkins Reid writes characters so vividly where you're so attached to them. She's so talented. Every book I've ever read by her, I felt like that. But this one, like I just felt like I was in their family. So well done, so much drama. And also basically the entire book takes place over one day, 24 hours. And each chapter is labeled like one o'clock, two o'clock. 
three o'clock and you watch the whole day because the siblings are throwing a giant party in this mansion. All the most famous people in California are going to this party. There's gonna be so much crazy shit going on and I just love this book and I feel like the message and like you see how much the characters like learned, I just thought it was so good. And it's just like one of those like bittersweet feelings you get when you finish. I just really recommend it. It's not like a beach house romance, but it is set at a beach house. <laughs> okay, then the next one is not like a romance and it's definitely something you've heard of. It's We Were Liars. See, I I can't form an opinion on this book because like when I think about my reaction when I read it I was like in shock at the plot twist, but the whole book I didn't love it Everything was so confusing and cryptic which it was supposed to be because then there's a plot twist and I loved the plot twist and I thought it was super interesting and like a good turn, but I just didn't love the book as a whole But a lot of people do love this book. It's very very popular But basically it's about this girl whose family literally owns an island like they're that rich They own like this entire island with all these mansions on it and they go there every summer But everyone is acting super weird to the main character like they're all not including her in things and like really watching over her and making sure she's being careful and kind of like babying her and they tell her this is because she had an accident last summer but she can't remember this so-called accident at all and everyone's just kind of like treating her very weirdly and the other characters keep saying like the most weird things to her and she's so confused she's like what happened and she's trying to uncover what happened to her because no one will tell her and everyone is saying like the doctors told us not to tell you it's better for for you not to know you don't want to have to go through that trauma again whatever the amount of things that i thought were what happened to her or they like hinted that this might have happened to her but then it wasn't that and then to find out what it actually was like it's completely unpredictable at least for me which is why i recommend the book is just because i want you to get to the plot twist and be like what the fuck but yeah i didn't really love like the whole book just because i was so confused and didn't know like what the point of it was there is a little romance in there as well, but not even like a subplot. <laughs> okay, the last books that I'm going to recommend, but I can't really talk about because I don't remember them at all, but I read them, I think in eighth grade, maybe freshman year of high school, like that summer. It was called the Sea Breeze series by Abby Glines, and I actually remember nothing from it, but I know it's a companion novel series that's like really long. Each book is a different couple, and it, they all take place in a beach town. I remember the first book like vaguely, and it was between like a famous musician like rock star guy and then a girl that was like did she like work in his house or her mom was like his maid or something so it's like one of us is famous trope in this rich beach town and then all of the couples are like friends and the series is young adult it must be if i read it when i was that young i mean I read Wattpad at the time, so maybe it wasn't because obviously I wasn't looking for appropriate books. <laughs> but yeah, I do remember really liking it at that time and they are all like beach house romances. So if you like companion novels where like all the characters are friends or they're all interconnected, the Seabury series by Abby Glines is like that. And it's also beach vibes. So I thought it'd be perfect to recommend today, but I can't talk about it very much because I don't remember it. <laughs> but with all that being said and all of those recommendations, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found some good books to add to your TBR. If you have any other books with this trope that you recommend to me please comment them down below because i'll be reading them this summer i hope you guys enjoyed the old trope video coming back i hopefully will be doing more in the future now that i have a bunch of books under my belt i can probably find a lot that have things in common without like forcing myself to do it but yeah if you want to follow me on my other social medias they're all linked down below as always and i'll see you in my next video very very soon bye